From hundreds of properties submitted, seven finalists have been chosen. Tonight, live with Jane and her guests, you will decide the final three. From those three, Jane will pick the winner of the Great Property Challenge. And thank you for deciding to be part of this very unique webinar. It's really great to have you here. And this is not going to be your average webinar. It's a very special session and a one-off opportunity to witness how to select the right property for renovation profit success. So in this session, your challenge, if you so choose, is to work hand in hand with me to interactively examine seven properties via an extensive process of elimination from many that have been submitted by our community. Together, we will decide which is the best to invest in and why. This is your opportunity to witness, learn and engage in how to choose the right property. So the seven properties that we will examine tonight will be pitched to us by those who submitted them on the grounds that they are an ideal strategic renovation potential property. To make it even more competitive, the winning property submission will gain free access to the Ultimate Guide to Renovation 2016, valued at over $2,400. You know, I think this is going to be a blast and I am so excited about this because I don't think it's ever been done before. Well, not by me and I don't know anyone who has ever attempted it either. So hold on to your seats. This is going to be an exciting ride. Now, this session will provide you with invaluable experience and the knowledge for your property investment future. So you are going to walk away with a lot of tools and techniques from this webinar, which is great. And I really encourage you to take notes and put them to good use because I want you to be successful. So before we start a bit of housekeeping, so let me get that out of the way. If for some reason you're having audio problems, there's also the option to call in on the phone. You can find the phone number on the GoToWebinar control panel. So when you have a question, and if there's a question and time for questions later tonight, I'll get you to participate by putting your hand up or writing your question into the chat box. I probably won't get a chance to get to them all though, because I really want to dive deep into these seven properties. So you'll find your hand button just above the audio tab when that happens. Now, as I said earlier, one of the lucky people tonight who I have chosen, and I went through all the 83 on the Facebook page, plus a few actually that came in just before uh, the cutoff earlier today, will get, is going to get free access to the Ultimate Guide to Renovation 2016 program, which is now not very far away. In fact, we are going to be opening enrolments in just three weeks. Now, this very special course only opens for enrolments for seven days twice a year. So we're all very excited here about it. Look, this course is essentially a strategic renovation masterclass for property investment investors. So let me tell you what it includes. We have 12 online modules of task by task video tutorials, and we walk you step by step through two real renovations. You get 12 months of support from me via my group monthly mentoring calls. You get the membership of the Renovator Network, and this is a private mastermind group where you can ask questions within a closed Facebook group, and it is an incredibly thriving and generous community. And there's a lots of supporting material as well. There's downloadable checklists and online software and spreadsheets, and we even throw in 12 months of a trade card discount. So a fantastic prize, and I know that someone is going to be very, very happy to get into that. So I hope the winner is on the call. Now, as you probably heard, I have a very special guest with me this evening, Karen Young, who's the founder of Property Zest, buyers agents, and of course, from Everyday Property Podcast. Hello, Karen. 
Hello, Jane. Thanks very much for having me on the show. I'm very excited. Oh, my God. So am I. So am I. Have you ever been part of anything quite like this before? Oh, not quite like this. I've been on a few webinars before, but uh, <laughs> not a live challenge like this. I think it's very exciting. I know. Well, you know, technical problems, sound, audio, cast of thousands. Who knows what's going to happen? I've got John here in the background is, uh, keeping it all going for me. So uh, if we run into any problems, I'm sure we can pull it off between the two of us, hey? <laughs> Absolutely. Now, look, I have chosen my top seven properties and I you know, sent you that list over a little bit earlier this evening. So I know you've had only just a bit of a chance to, to go through these and have a look. And we have pulled them from around Australia, which is really exciting. And I really do thank for all the people who did submit properties because um, I know that um, I couldn't get to them all. I tried to make comments on the Facebook page and add a bit of value to you as well. But uh, thank you so much for taking the effort and uh, submitting your property. So, Karen, we are going to throw to John. John, will you tell us about the first property, please? Thanks, Jane. This classic cottage in Maruka, Queensland, is said to have huge potential and is situated on a large corner block. Presented to the market for the first time in over 50 years, this classic post-war cottage offers one of the best development prospects in the area. It is set on an impressive block with abundant northern sunshine, wide frontage, creating plenty of appeal to renovators and young families entering the market. Wow. Thank you, John. So let's have a look at that property. I just want to bring that up on the screen. So this property, Kaz, you've had a bit of a look at it before we uh, bring up the property. Did you have some comments about it? You know this area being a Queenslander. Yeah, look, it's, it's nice to start off with one I'm familiar with. And there's certainly this exercise of looking at all the properties made me think about how important it is to know an area, mm -hmm. and, but I'm sure we'll, we'll discuss that at, at some point. But this particular house, look, it's it's typical of the sort of style of this area. It's a, it's a nice little spot, a little bit more. marika has got a couple of sections to it. One is a bit closer to the train station, a bit more sort of investorsville, and the other side is a bit more owner occupier. And this side's over on the owner occupier side. Not to say there's not you know investors on this side as well, but it is over on that side. Um, my, my initial, do you want me to go on with initial thoughts on yeah, that or do you want to have no, a Initial thoughts, I'm just going to run through some yeah. of the pictures whilst you have a chat because uh, well, we've got the kitchen here, looks like we could add some potential there. So yeah, give me some little thoughts. Yeah, look, I, I thought it was a really a nice little house that's ripe for renovation. You can see from those pictures there, it's in quite original condition. But to me, it looks like it's been loved, owner-occupied and loved. And that too is a really big factor because there's a whole lot of money you can spend fixing stuff versus a whole lot of money you can spend making uh, things better and, and beautiful rather than spending Getting money the on the fixing. Getting the bang for your buck. <laughs> invisible, money, invisible money, I call that stuff, yes. where you have to fix things first. So um, I really liked it because it looked like it had been loved. Um, it's original, easy, looks like a nice, easy cosmetic reno on a good size block of land. I think it was a 607. Um, my big thing about this one, I thought, was that I'd want to be careful about... Um, the extent or the scope of renovation you went in for. I think it would do nicely with a little cosmetic reno, but I'd be a little bit worried if people wanted to really go the hack on it. You may find that you could overcapitalize mm -hmm. um, because I know the end sale value of a, of a renovated property in that area, and I also know the buy-in price of this sort of property as well. And there's not huge differences between the two, so you'd have to be pretty careful about that in my view. Yeah, look, good point. I think um, I, what I did is I went and uh, got a, a Residex report because it was interesting that the median, we pulled up the median for the area and the median showed around about a $500,000, $503,000. It also showed that um, this came up as a three bedroom property, but it estimated the price around about five eighty. dollars So that first of, I guess, first and foremost had me a little bit concerned because I looked at this and thought, Oh, if the median's 503 and we had a look at, uh, for the entire area, um, and we had a look at um, this being a bit over, maybe there's not a lot of money to be had, exactly what you said. i tell you what I did get kind of excited about. So this is the just the Residex property report um, CMA that I've generated. So it's gone through some comparable sales and mainly three bedrooms that you can see there as well. It's pitched it just above the typical property in the street, which is interesting. So, um, you know, it's not one of the lower properties in the street that you could renovate up to being, you know, the best in the street. 
But what I did take a lot of interest from is it's had some continual growth and has been outperforming the Brisbane market, which is great. And um, it also has had has this predicted growth for the next seven years and for the next eight years. Just one of the things you mentioned there about the, the median house price of 500. In that section of Maruka there, and in fact in most of Maruka now, I'd be very surprised, you know, to get a house at or under 500 mm. would be very rare. So just the, um, you got to think about that in terms of looking at data online is, is knowing that, you know, the median there says 500, but in my, to my knowledge, under 500 in Maruka is very difficult these days. Okay. Um, so that's just something, I guess, to, to think about. Um, I actually did a flip project in Maruka two years ago. <laughs> Right, so, so you, you already uh, spotted that area, did you? Yeah, but yeah, we bought uh, a house for 343000 in Maruka two years ago, which you won't do now, that's for sure. Oh, wow. So it's definitely had good growth. <laughs> well, look, let me show my screen here. I want to show you, um, I'm going to jump into to Ripe House and have a look at uh, this area because as you indicate, um, it's not always what you think is going on. So this is Ripe House, which is a paid software tool, one of the tools that I use to do my analysis. And what I really like about this is it allows us to assess um, a, an area quite quickly, but also the property. And I try to get a feel for what's happening in the area. So here's a Marika here, we've got the Brisbane River, um, it pops up here and tells me there's 85 properties for sale at the moment and the typical property is a three-bedroom house. Now, this isn't technically a three-bedroom house, is it? It's a two-bedroom house with a sunroom. So, you know, it's not quite the typical property for the area either. Um, now, so what I might just do is have a look at the properties on the market at the moment and I'm just going to filter it by two-bedroom properties so I can actually find where this property is. So let me just pull this property up and we can have a look. Hopefully everyone uh, can see this as it's come through. So here's this property we've just had a look at. Now what's interesting, I get an indication of condition listing. So I get a feel for if it's been on the market for a while and it has been discounted. And it gives me some information about the suburb, but then specifically about the area. Now, the really interesting thing about the data that is pulled from Ripe House is they pull a lot of the information from census. And census's smallest um, criteria for assessment is an SA1, which is around about 200 dwellings. So what we're looking at here is not the suburb, we're actually looking at this SA1 just particularly for this property. So, you know, where we can see that the suburb itself has 36% renters, exactly what Kaz was saying, it tells me in this area, there's only 18% renters. So, I mean, you're saying, Kaz, that it was a bit more of an owner-occupier area, this area, and that kind of validates yeah. that, doesn't it? Yeah. What uh, this also allows me to do is if I jump in here and uh, have a, a little bit further uh, look at this area, I can actually turn on the um, sweet spots for the area. So if I decide I want capital growth, so as you saw before, you know, I've now got five areas that actually comply with a capital growth type strategy. So you want a smaller amount of public housing, you know, you want occupancy of above 30% tenants, but you know, less than say 70% um, tenants, you want to have some owner occupiers in the area. And we want to have, you know, the property type is fit for the area, so a house rather than units. So if I apply this, I'm just trying to see here, is this in the sweet spot area? Not necessarily so with that capital growth. So the sweet spots are also determined by the distance from schools, from shops, and from uh, infrastructure and transport. So not quite that area. I will just have a look here about the occupancy type. So this is where the renters are. The renters are in the yellow area and we can see the owner occupiers here in the green. So Teresa, I think you're on the line now. Are you available to have a chat to us? Oh, let's Hello. Have... Hey, how are you? Congratulations for being chosen. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sorry, I had some trouble with my microphone. So tell us, why did you choose yes. this suburb, this property? Uh, the main reason was I really like Maruka at the moment just because um, it's surrounded by suburbs with a lot higher median um, price mm -hmm. and I um, think it's going through some gentrification at the moment and just really liked the fact that it was a two-bedroom, um, looked like it had some good 
um, cosmetic reno opportunity. Yep. And also, um, I'm not sure your thoughts here, but my initial thinking was that there was potentially scope to do a structural and increase it to a four bed, two bar. But I'm not really confident on the logistics of all of that. Yeah, so are you talking, um, so it's actually high set and uh, John, the king of uh, boxes at the back, always says that we should look for a, a bit of uh, room at the back, don't we, John, for the, the box at the back. Does this something that kind of uh, springs that onto you? Yes, yeah, so it looks like it's sloping downhill at the back, doesn't it? So mm. is that right? Am I looking at the, the right way? It's a bit small on my screen, but yeah. Yep, the front is it's, up the front. Yeah, there you go. It's definitely better than the other way around. Otherwise, you can have a problem with your ceiling height because the box on the back needs to tuck under that, that roof line, that eave at the back there. So there could be potential. It does. It would seem to me, though, that um, you may be overcapitalizing if you did that. So let me just jump into, hmm, where shall I go? Census. Let's have a look at census. And I'm going to put in, this is one of those, those funny little suburbs that, uh, I'm not a great speller is basically all I'm telling you here. And have you actually, you've actually been looking for a property for a while, Teresa? Um, I'm always looking, just um, <laughs> Aren't we all? trying to keep my eye open, yeah, <laughs> yes. So let's just see if there's like a, a real calling for a four bedroom property. So what I've done is I've jumped into census here. Now this is the data from 2011, rather excited that we're going to get more data uh, coming through soon. But so the typical property here, we can definitely see is a three bedroom. We can see here that, you know, we know it's a two bedroom at the moment. With that floor plan, look, there might be some opportunity to play with this a little and, you know, create um, a third bedroom. But I think what you'll be doing is it doesn't look like a lot of living space to, to begin with. So I think that uh, anything structural might actually not return the value for the area. And the, if you went to a four bedroom, only 17% of the market is actually interested in, in the four bedroom property. So I think that might actually be overcapitalizing. Kaz, do you have a, a thought on that? Yeah, look, my thoughts on this would be that perhaps down the track, I think at the minute I would probably do some sort of a, um, a lower budget cosmetic reno and try and reconfigure to get another bedroom in so I've got a better yield. And then I'd hang on to it and think about the structural a little bit down the track. I'm not too sure that the end sale value of, of the structurally renovated could warrant it just now, but it's a good location and, and you could do a little bit to it now and then just hold on for later. And that 7% uh, growth, I mean, that's exceptional growth. You know, I'm, I'm always looking at uh, a lot of suburbs and there's not a lot of uh, suburbs that are coming up with, you know, in the next five to eight years, 7% growth. So for that alone, I, I'd keep it on my, my watch list. Um, I'm just jumping into suburbview.com here. Now, if I go into the reports tab for Maruka, a little known area, and... Uh, let me just do that one more time. So what I'm looking for is the reports tab, so for Marika, because sometimes the information in here, Teresa, comes up and it tells me specifically what price point I'd be expecting per bedroom. Don't ask me why, but go to the three-month rental yield because this seems to have the most consistent data. And I'm looking at houses, and as you can see here, the four bedroom, as Kaz said, there could be some potential for structural down the track. They're 874 is the average, but it's a 629 median here for a four bedroom, 515 for a three bedroom, and uh, the two bedrooms are going for 449. So I didn't see a price that was listed here. Did, uh, what was it listed for? Any indications, Teresa? No, no price. Yeah. So it, this is a really handy way just to see, you know, at the price point, what they, those um, properties could be. So as I said, you know, I, I got the uh, Residex report as I scroll professionally to the top and it did indicate around about 580. So it does have a, a, a higher um, price point than, you know, uh, the three bedrooms are going for and definitely more than the two bedrooms. So I'd, I'd, uh, if, it's, if it's been offered for less than 580 then, and uh, around this 449 price range, it might really be a bit of a bargain. So, yeah, that's my thoughts. In the, market, in the current market, I'd probably say you'd be looking at early sixes to mid sixes for that. Which is that four bedroom price point. Um, yeah, well, sort of even three bedroom, like a good renovated, oh, not even renovated, but a, a good um, 
you know, solid original home like that. Mm. I think the um, Auto Valley and RP data put that one about 613, but I would put it around, you know, low to mid sixes. Yep. In its current state. There you go. So any offers going to go in on this one, maybe? Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Teresa. Really appreciate yeah. and uh, stay on the line just in case you're the winner later on. Thank you very much, Jane. Thanks, oh. Karen. All the best. Okay, so let's uh, bring up our second property here. John, would you like to give me a rundown? Well, 12 Harding Street, Coburg, Victoria is situated opposite Bridges Reserve, according to the real estate agent, and just a short stroll from Sydney Road shops, eateries and tram. This three-bedroom plus study home is also walking distance to Coburg Market, Coburg Leisure Centre, Upfield Bike Path and Coburg Train Station and it has several schools nearby. Although not livable in its current state, a renovation or rebuild, subject to council approval, in such a prime location promises long-term reward, sure to attract smart buyers and renovators. Wow, well maybe we'll cross straight to Marcus. Is Marcus available there? This is really a diamond in the rough. Check this out. <laughs> so what have we got here? So Marcus, are you there? We're waiting for Marcus. Uh, Kaz, did you have some thoughts? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm from Melbourne originally, so, and I do know this area pretty well. My mum used to live around there. Um, the area generally is, is a good suburb, uh, but when I did have a little look at this earlier on, I was a little bit worried to be honest with you. I mean, the house, yes, definitely the house needs work, but I was worried because Harding Street's quite a busy road. Yeah. And when I looked at from the satellite, it was opposite a big car park, like a major car park next to another car park. And all of those, like, the, I think the location put me off before I even went to consider the house any further, to be honest. Oh, Karen, i, I got to say that, uh, that uh, wood panelling in the bathroom always... Uh, I always find interesting. I guess the you know it's always interesting to hear what the agents say about this, and you know they're they're definitely talking up um, the the area. And uh, when you have when you see a lot of street scenes and not property scenes when you're looking at the property, I always worry a little bit. And I guess structurally, you know, you look at this and you wonder about what's happening um, on the roof. Now I'll tell you something, and I'm going to let. Ooh, well, obviously, a thousand people into a little secret. Um, over over the last few weeks, we've uh, been running a um, a uh, we ran a location masterclass last Monday, uh, last Saturday, and we looked at some areas that were going to um, be of interest in Melbourne. And I'm not going to give the full list of ten away. But what was really interesting is Coburg came up. And one of the most interesting things about this, and, and I went and bought the um, well, Residex um, a predictions report, so the top 100 predictions report, which I want to share with you because I want to show you uh, what um, that looks like. So this is the renovator's top 100 report. What it does is it goes through and it looks at pricing disparity within streets, within suburbs, and it comes back and it tells you how many streets within a suburb have some kind of renovation potential. Now, we have to bear this in mind with the location. It is a busy road, obviously, but there's, and if it's very, very long roads, sometimes these reports kind of throw as well because there, there could be one end of the street that's a, a lot better than the other end. Let me have a look at the actual Coburg Renovator Report. So the Renovator Report is at this, actually the specific report and this report actually dives down and it gives you an idea per street what we're looking at in the pricing disparity. And what I really like in this report is jumping through and having a look at, once again, we get to stroll through a lot of this stuff just down here. The streets ranked by renovation potential. So, you know, this is renovation potential. These calculations are based on looking at a 10% cosmetic renovation. They're looking at the spread of values of the houses in the street. So if there's 100 houses in the street, they break them up into increments of 10. So there'll be 10 houses in each price point. And what you're really looking at when you're doing a cosmetic renovation is buying like the Trident strategy indicates below the market. So you might be looking at a two or three and trying to renovate up to maybe a seven 
seven or eight and make enough money and profit. So what that has done is auto-populated this calculation for us. We can see Harding Street here with that calculation. The differential that they're indicating here for uh, Harding Street is over $270,000. Now you can go back and calculate this yourself, but it's really interesting that it comes up with uh, that information that allows you to actually, and let's jump down here until we can find Harding Street. So what we're trying to do is make sure there's enough uh, properties within the, each of the price ranges. So here it says on Harding Street, there's 100 properties. So there's 10 to 12 properties within each price range. Now, if you see a green here and rents, what it indicates is there's 10 properties that you could potentially buy for around about 580,000. And if you could renovate that with maybe a 50, 60,000 dollar renovation, then it's the potential that you could put, possibly push this. Now, this is all on Harding Street. So all these properties, all these houses are on this busy road. So it's really kind of giving you that kind of reference. So here it indicates there's quite a lot of scope here for this to have renovation potential. And it obviously shows you some of the properties that are currently listed, so including our one. So they've also estimated the value of this property and they've estimated that around 800,000, which is interesting, and a three bedroom property. So what I really like about this is that it gives us an idea of uh, the renovation potential that Coburg has. So Coburg's got one of the top 100 um, suburbs in, the, uh, in Victoria that has this renovation potential. And in addition to that, what we have in this street is we actually have some spread because you don't necessarily get that in the street, hence why you need both reports. Okay, so let me just jump um, back over here because what I want to do now is I want to jump into Ripe House and I want to have a look at Coburg because I want to see what is actually happening in the area. So let's go and have a look at Coburg here. And once again, a bit of information about the suburbs and a jump up. So let's get a feel for the suburb of Coburg. It's um, basically what I'm looking for here is, is this property type, uh, type typical? So, you know, what's the price point for it? It's estimating 550 to 600 um, is what Marcus indicated for us. I'm just going to see if I can pull up that property via three bedroom house and see where it comes up. And we'll have a look at what Kaz was saying in the indi indication of um, the information about it being on this street. So let's just have a look at this street. So on the street, we've got 31% renters and 30% for the actual suburb. So this kind of just passes my criteria of having over 30% renters in the area. I really think you need that to be confident that you can rent your, your property out. Um, in particular, there's less than 19% units in the area and less than 16% in this um, SA1, which is that 200 dwelling. So we've got some good uh, yield, 3.7. So this gives us some information here. Let's just pop this away. One of the things that uh, you know we're always interested in having a look at is maybe having a look at the growth of nearby uh, suburbs as well. Now this growth is just, you know, not last 10 years growth. So that anyone who's done my dot map knows that I look at the past 10 year growth when I'm doing a ripple effect. But what this indicates for me in the growth is that there's 44 uh, different suburbs that I've pulled up here. You can see the growth in Preston in the last quarter is 3.6. The growth in Coburg East is, hasn't been great. We've got, um, let me just hide this, Coburg 9, 3 point, North 3.1%. We've got Pasco Vale, 2.9%. So the redder areas, so Brunswick East has obviously had a very high growth. So the redder areas have had more growth. So it does indicate that we might have some growth pressure around here. Now, once again, this is only quarterly data. So interesting, but uh, there you go. So Coburg ticks the box with renovation potential. So Harding Street ticks the box. The property is definitely ripe for renovation. Hmm. So this is a, a real, uh, contender. Let's just hope that Marcus makes it uh, <laughs> makes it on the, the line uh, so we can consider him later. So, cool. Well, shall we move on to property three, John? Sure, Jane. Attention renovators. This parkside sandstone fronted villa in South Australia is in an ideal location, according to the real estate agent. It has a flexible floor plan, currently offering seven main rooms, plus laundry, bathroom and WC. It has spacious kitchen meals area, rear veranda, single car garage, tool shed and workshop. It's close to shopping, transport and some of Adelaide's best schools 
and only five minutes drive to Adelaide CBD. Okay, well, Kaz, what do you think of this one? Loving the carpet. Oh, they did put a new light fitting in there, or has that been hmm, photoshopped in? I don't know. What are you thinking, Kaz? Um, yeah, look, I think this house has a really, like, a, quite a really nice um, look to the front of it that mm. I quite liked. I thought it was a very cute looking house. Um, I think it's it's got like a, a stone looking exterior. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that's a really cute little house. Now, obviously, I don't know this area, so I don't know what's characteristic in this area. Yep. And maybe every house looks like this, but I think this looks cute. Um, the, the thing that struck me about it was I really like the way it's got a very shabby looking garden, um, particularly at the rear. And the inside, to me, it just looked like you could make really big grounds with some simple cleaning up, simple landscaping, simple, you know, your, your normal basics inside, your paint, your floors, your window coverings. Yep. You could make lots of ground in this property and already it's it's a cute property. Yep. So I quite liked it from that perspective. I don't know what the numbers are like in this area, so I don't know if, if the area would support um, the renovation, but I thought it was, a, yeah, a cute house, good basics that you could chuck in there and make it look really good on a nice block. How about you, Jane? I oh, Look, I, I think the same. I don't know South Australia at all. Uh, hopefully uh, Anna's there and uh, she'll be able to fill us in. Anna Martin. So uh, he'll be able to fill it. She'll be able to fill us in on uh, why she chose it. Looks like a large block. Um, it's a trustee sale, which is interesting. Um, and it is, I guess, first time offered in quite a while. I love the idea of the sandstone fronted properties and I like the idea of um, having this potential uh, to renovate and as you said it doesn't really look like it has a lot of structural problems associated with it. So I quite like that. Um, what I would want to do and some of the concerns that I often have with uh, when I run into uh, South Australia and assessing properties in South Australia and especially if they're in Adelaide is that they're very small usually some of these um, suburbs and when we talk about the census SA1 sizing there's some suburbs that I've gone to evaluate that there's actually only two of those 200 dwelling blocks in there so there's only 400 dwellings. Just go a little Parkside, South Australia. Let's have a look at Parkside. Oh, so there you go. It's not very big. 4,000 uh, people in Little Parkside. Where is it? Oh, quite close to CBD Adelaide, which is nice. Let's have a look at what the typical dwellings look like. So we have three bedrooms. 40% have three bedrooms and 36% have um, two bedrooms. So we've got a, a three bedroom property. So I guess that's kind of interesting. It gives us a, a kind of a look of, you know, when you don't know an area, what I try to do is get a feel for how big it is, the location to the CBD, etc. One of the really great little websites uh, that I've come across quite recently is a website called microburbs.com.au. Now, I don't know Parkside, so I'm just going to throw Parkside in here and hope for the best, find out what they're going to tell me about Parkside. So let's go and have a look. And this you know, I've been to, uh, at, had enjoyed a nice Easter in Adelaide recently, last year. So I'm just trying to get a feel for this little area of Parkside here. So um, if I hover over these areas, it gives me an indication of some where some planning applications are at the moment. Now, this is interesting. If there's a big block apartments going in, shopping centres, etc., that's of interest that we want to know about. If they you know, we're putting up a carport, yeah, people improving their property. If there's some, you know, changes to or subdivision going on, it might give me an indication that the council is right for a sub a subdivision in this area. Or so there's some information there that's great. Ethnicity is um, not something that I often look at. This family score is kind of interesting. So city of churches. So we're surrounded by uh, schools here and Catholic and private. So it gives us an idea a lot about the, the uh, demographic as well. So 7% of the population is 15 to 19, 12% is five to 14. So primary schooling is important. So I would have considered that to be important when looking at a property and trying to pick the right property for my demographic. So my demographic is telling me quite a lot here that uh, you know a family home is important. This is also interesting, which is the affluence score. So if I hover over here, it will actually tell me in different parts of, and once again, this is these SA1 200 dwelling lots, 
they will tell me in the different parts of Parkside, you know, where the richer people live. So $746 a week in income, $1,000, $1,200. So this is a, a bit of a more expensive area over here at $1,500. So I'm getting a feel for the suburb. Uh, nice to have a look at the lifestyle, lifestyle score. Seven's good, shows me where all the bars and cafes are. Convenience, this is really handy. This gives me ideas about uh, shopping centres, it gives me uh, walking schools and information about what kind of transport's there. It's a six out of 10. Tranquility, who can ever not pass up on tranquility? Gives me an idea of population density. So, um, you know, the tenant rate, so 38% tenants like that, bit leafy which is lovely. Um, hipness. Can you hear me now? Oh my gosh, Anna. I don't have to look at a website. Hi. You can tell me all about South Australia and this lovely little little area. <laughs> I've just got up to hipness. It looks like it's a hip place to live. Um, the, re yeah, the reason why I chose this house is these bluestone villas is people love them. They love them to That's be me. restored. Yep. Um, yeah. Oh, you muted yourself again. Oh. She's probably telling us some really interesting things about this, but she wants to hold it all to herself so she can buy it. Uh, Anna, we can't hear you. I'm gonna push on and keep talking uh, whilst we're, we're waiting. Community score, City of Churches. So this gives us some uh, real interesting information. Now, if you go into, this is a little, little trick that I found recently. If you go into the community score and check out long-term residents here, this actually pulls up a heat map and tells us, so here we are at Parkside, 57%. So this is between the census over the last five years, how many people have moved. So not that tightly held as compared to some of these other areas where we've got 73% in Unley and Millswood. How about this, Karen? Is this a great little website? Have you ever seen this before? No, I haven't, and I was just, I was writing down little notes here. I'm definitely <laughs> going to go and have a little look over this website. It looks, um, looks fantastic. Uh, it's fabulous. I, I keep getting people sending me these new sites and things that they're developing, so I, I get it, get a sneak preview. So I really, um, I'm getting a feel for this area. Anna, if you're there, we'd love to, oh, she's back. She's gone again. <laughs> we know that she exists, so we, we won't uh, put you through the stress of it. Um, look. I think what we, we decided with this little property is there's great renovation potential. Um, there's some opportunity for you to potentially, um, uh, I guess, look at uh, uh, buying um, in this area. I, I would, I guess, want to be, make sure that the price point was okay. So the median for the area was 695. It's not 768 square meters, which seems good. Um, the 38% rented, which is also great, great proximity to the city. I reckon what I would do here is I'd jump into RP data and I might just generate a quick report on this. So, oh, look, it's like I had something prepared before. So this actually uh, logs me out, logs me in. This actually allows me to uh, pull up the property Often what you might want to have a look at, especially you know, on busy roads or where there's some development, et cetera, happening, this is a really cool little feature in RP Data Professional. And if you go into a property and you go to the map area, you can actually pull up layers and pull up themes of properties that have been selling in the area. So you, know, you might get a feeling for the fact that there's, you know, it's tightly held or there's a lot of people selling. So we're looking at this. And so we've got a, a map layer of what's been selling in the last 12 months. So there has been some sales in the area, which is kind of interesting for such a small area as well. So it's interesting that there's been sales. They're really handy uh, little feature. And they also have um, some features there on uh, dimensions if you're looking at subdividing and easements but you get to get a feel for how many properties have also been renting in the area. So, you know, we've got one that's just down the road, maybe a couple across the road. So we've got some comparables we can start looking at. Now, I generated a valuation report uh, for this property. So let me just pull that up so we can get an estimate. And uh, you've got to buy beware on, uh, on valuation reports, haven't you, Karen? 
Uh, yes, definitely. I do think that you need to take it with a grain of salt. I've seen some that are um, quite accurate and I've seen some that are nowhere near it. So yeah. just take them with a grain of salt. So these are just another tool that you can put in your toolbox. But what I want to show you is, you know, there's some free websites, there's some paid websites and software that you can access. So this automation tool, this is really interesting. The reason why I like using this often is if this little forecast standard deviation number is actually below 10, so putting my mortgage broking hat on here, a lot of the banks actually use this tool as their desktop valuation tool. And if that FSD is less than 10, it usually means they will take that estimated value as a desktop valuation. No questions asked, don't have to send the value out. So it's a really handy little heads up of what's going on in the area. This is a huge range, 500 to 885, maybe the estimate value at 700,000. Now, so this is, this is showing us um, a bit more about this area. I also, once again, went and bought a Residex report and where we were around 702, these guys came in at 703 with a bit of a range as well. Smaller range, but a bit of a range. Now, Trident strategy, buy below the market. Mm, I'm not too sure if this is gonna be below the median. So we've got in this street for Leicester Street, it's a number four, so it's not the, the best street in, in the, sorry, the best house in the street, which is great. Um, what we are also wanting to look at is what the median is. So park size median here to date is 818. So, you know, it would seem that when we look at the estimates that we're, we're below that, which is good. So we've got potentially below the median how, and uh, below the street average. And when we go down here and we try to have a look at some information on what the predicted growth is, compared to Adelaide, Parkside has some higher predicted growth. So all in all, you know, we've got some really good data here. We've got 38% renters. We've got um, a property, beautiful sandstone property. It's a trustee property. Um, we've got the census information. It says it is a small area. We've got that hypnos school. So we know that it's a good little area. Seems to be close proximity to everything. It's well maintained and there could be opportunity here. So this one could be a good one. So thank you, Anna, for putting that up. And uh, wow. We're getting through these, aren't we, uh, Kaz? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't pick 20. This could have been a long night. But these are, these are crackers, some of these, aren't I, they? I know. Good thing to talk about. I know. And I love, uh, I love the opportunity to, um, to see some of these little properties that uh, no one, you know, that are kind of hidden gems. And, you know, if, if we were just looking at them ourselves, we probably wouldn't even come across our 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 view but you know these guys have pulled these up to us which is great so what I am going to do now is I'm going to show you something else a little bit interesting so one of the people who put a property up on the Facebook page was Julie and uh, she put this up and I was really interested in uh, the way she described it so essentially said you know, this is a this property uh, could sell for six hundred to six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It's near Ballarat. Um, I'm assuming you guys can see this this screen. It's near Ballarat. Um, you know, it's it's a clean, tidy little property, but it's actually got a high median in the area. And she's saying, you know, if it was renovated, she believes that it would sell between eight fifty and nine hundred thousand dollars. So that's a big discrepancy, 600 to 850. So that kind of got me a little bit interested and I was looking at this property. Now, it didn't make the final cut, but here's the interesting thing about this. And this is why you haven't seen it, Karen. It was, it was one of my little uh, showcases. Here's Julie here. She's actually the real estate agent who's put this up. And I have to say of dealing, because you're dealing with real estate agents every day as a buyer's agent, but Dealing with real estate agents, they're often not proactive. They're not looking for what investors are uh, looking for. They don't speak our language and they don't know often how to present properties. But here's someone in this Ballarat area who is doing a good turn to her client. So I would say, call out to Julie Edwards. If you need to buy or sell in Ballarat, I would be, that would be my first port of call and go Julie. It's great to see a real estate agent actually taking initiative and finding this platform to present their property. So go you. So what do you think, Karen? Oh yeah, look, I, I have heard that around the lake there can fetch some good prices. I'm, and 
good on you, Julie, for putting that forward. I am going to contact you, Julie, because my dad's selling his house in Ballarat at the moment and they've not got any bites on it yet, so maybe we need to have a chat. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We even have you a sale. So, Julie, thank you so very much. Okay, well, I am going to go to our next property now, John, and I think we're going back to South Australia. Sure, Jane. This Letty Street property in Prospect, South Australia, is an original bungalow on 740 square metres, suitable for reno or redevelopment. Best to say it's a blank canvas in a sought-after pocket of Prospect, perfect for buyers seeking a major renovation project. Inside offers three bedrooms, former lounge, eating kitchen, plus an additional bedroom or study at the back of the home. Outside features a single lock-up garage plus a large shed. Located just a short stroll from North Park Shopping Centre within easy access to public transport and the city. There is subdivision potential, according to the real estate agent, with scope to build two single or double storey properties. Interesting. Well, do we have Mark on the line? Let's see if Mark is there. Put your hand up, Mark, uh, yeah, so we can see your hand and we can unmute your line because we would love to have a chat to you and find out why you actually put this up. Because this is an interesting one. I, I looked at the entry hall when it started and thought, oh, maybe they're halfway through um, uh, cleaning the floorboards. And then we went to the next picture and it looks like a pink carpet laying gone wrong. So interesting place. Okay, so- Yeah, so Jane, I, I had a quick look at this one and um, I, I was interested because 740 square metres in subdivision, that doesn't equate to me in many circumstances mm. here in Queensland, in Brisbane. Mm. So that was one thing I, I was interested to find out from, from Mark about that. Um, the other thing was, and I'm sure you picked up on it flicking through those photos, <laughs> there's a few big cracks in the walls yeah. and, and around the ceiling. maybe, yeah. Maybe yeah, a little worried about the structural integrity of this one. How about you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. When I see those big cracks, first of all, I, I take a bit of a gasp and then I think, oh, everyone else is worried. There could be opportunity because they're backing off. So um, don't, you know, sometimes it could just be a restumping issue or something you have to consider. And obviously you'd restump before you start plastering again because you're going to move the property. But um, yeah, the cracking was of a bit of a concern and uh, obviously the carpets, etc., haven't been changed for a while and it hasn't been maintained all that well. So there, it would definitely uh, create a pest and building inspection in my mind that we would be rushing off to do. Um, I'm just going to see if Mark's there. Mark? No. no? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into SQM Research and pull up. Uh, 5082, which is the suburb here. So SQM Research are known for their vacancy rate information. Now, this is a really new little feature they have called the SQM coefficient curve. And you can actually, you know, choose sold properties over particular years, you know, the last 12 months, for instance, and have a look when properties have sold. Now, just picking up on what Kaz was saying there and the question around subdivision, what I like about this little block is it actually allows you really quickly to have a look at some of the sold information. Now, this is telling me that the typical block is around 700,000. So this block was 748, wasn't it? Let me see my notes. Seven something, something around there. So, you know, as Kaz said, there's not a lot around here around the 300 block, 300... Um, uh, meters squared. So I'd be a little bit concerned that your the subdivision would actually be creating a property that not most of the market want. So first and foremost, that kind of um, had me a little bit concerned. This property is also, I believe, a three bedroom property where a typical property for the area, uh, sorry, is a four bedroom property. So let's just have a quick little look at this. So, no, it's three bedroom property. So I believe the typical property for the area is a three bedroom property. Now, we can use many different ways to um, have, a look at, have a look at an area and um, look through what that area is. What I have done is, where did our little property go? Here it is here, is I have got the, once again, went to Residex and purchased the Resitex report for this just to get a feel for what they thought this property was worth. So 740 square meters, uh, three bedroom, gives it an eight out of 10, pitches it around $600,000. So that's interesting. Let's have a look what the median is for the area here. So here's some comparables. In the street of Letty itself, it's actually at an eight. 
So if I was looking at renovation potential from the, from the point of view of buying at the lower end of the street and renovating up, I'd, I'd be trying to buy at the lower, the 480s, 450s and renovate up to that 600. This is actually pitching this at a 600, which having seen the internal scope of it has me a little concerned. So we would want to be validating our information elsewhere. I can see here that, you know, Prospect has been on a bit of a run. The last two years has, has actually been doing, you know, 10% growth. So that's really good. If I'm looking at the rental information here, it's got a lower yield to the rest of Adelaide and days on the market, you know, 33 days. This means that this area is actually moving quite fast. So, you know, when, when we've got some information here that's indicating that it's an interesting area, you know, we're, we're always into doing a little bit more research. Once again, though, we come back to this 3% growth. Now, if you're truly following the Trident strategy, which is, you know, buy below the market and, um, and try to make money when you're buying, creating a manufacturing equity through renovation, which it would seem you potentially could actually overcapitalize here by having large structural renovations that you have to do, and then having capital growth to pull you through the future, 3%, mm, I don't know, Karen, it's not enough to really, uh, really excite me. What about you? Yeah, look, it's a cute looking house, so I think you could make it look amazing. But as we know, making things look amazing is not their main <laughs> aim money. of the game. So yeah, I'd have to be thinking hard about whether the numbers will work. Yeah, and I think that's the important thing. You know, once again, as I said, with these these little areas, you know, we want to. There's some gentrification going on in these areas, so you don't always want to uh, get, you know, say no. But uh, that future growth and the predictions around that, would want, I would want to be doing a little bit more um, investigation. Look, it's a bigger area, 19,000 population uh, compared to what we had looked at earlier. So this is actually on the northern end of Adelaide. So it's still quite you know, nicely located within that, uh, that city area. And we just jump down here to the dwellings. Let's just have a look. The three bedroom property, 42%. So it's right on target for um, the typical type of property and 31%. So just over my 30% bar that I would have as well. So look, I think there's there's renovation potential. The growth has me uh, a little bit concerned and the structural renovation that's needed. Um, I would like to just finish this off by jumping in and uh, having a look at prospect in South Australia's median prices. So let's just have a look at that information. Patience, Jane. So once again, we're just north here of North Adelaide and the information for the suburbs that have come up here, a lot of properties for sale. And the darker the property, the, um, the more expensive and the wider ones are the rentals. So the lower quartile for sale, 232, upper quartile, 487 and from memory we had Residex at 597 so you know we we're at, at the top end of this market as well. Um, let's just filter these properties quite quickly and have a look at the three bedroom properties in the area. Let's pull up this little cutie. So let's see if it's been listed previously. So no, just listed on the 19th of February. Nice information. So a bit of information about the suburb itself, average for sale in the last quarter. So this gives us a quarterly information um, compared to last year. So a little bit of a drop. Let's just jump to this area where the property is itself. So we've got uh, 350s per week in the rest of the, in the suburb, 370 here. Uh, public housing on mark. The income of people about the same. A little bit more renters in this area, which is great, and less units, so and a better yield. So this is actually coming up quite nicely as a little cute area. It's right at the end of um, of the suburb as well. And if we just want to have a look at occupancy type, percentage renters, uh, we click on there. I've got um, what have I got? Rental density, thirty one percent. Over here is fifty percent. Next door is twenty one percent. The green areas. Uh, more owner occupiers. So if you had a flipping renovation strategy, you would be targeting properties to sell on to owner occupiers. So this would give you a real heads up, these green areas where you would want to uh, potentially have a search set up 
um, to alert you when properties are coming on the sale. Let's just have a look at property type, houses. So typical air, uh, property in the area is houses and this is a three bedroom house. So once again, the growth really, I think, uh, has me a bit worried, but there you go. Well, how about uh, we throw to the next property? Sure, Jane, positioned back on the block and screened from the street, this understated three bedroom property on Sweet Home is one of the most popular suburbs in Monash ACT. Its local school and shops are only moments away. There's good access to frequent bus routes and it's only moments from Tungarong Town Centre, Erindale Group Centre and Lake Tungarong. The home itself has had plenty of recent improvements while still providing the next owner with plenty of opportunity to renovate and improve the value. Okay, so let's just have a look here a little bit further at this floor plan, uh, which is just another typical agent not allowing us to see anything. So we've got a big living area here. We've got a dining area, we've got a family area, and we've actually got these three bedrooms here. So we've got this living zone and the bedroom zone down here. I had wondered just staring without glasses on at this, whether there was an opportunity to potentially open up this living space and make it a little bit more amenable. But uh, Lisa had said that she believes the offers are over 440 for, oh, Lisa, are you there? Hello? Yes, I hear you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, can oh. you see me? <laughs> Um, well, we were running around trying to get access. My, um, for some reason, my computer didn't want to show it up, so I'm sitting at my partner's computer. Good. Sorry about that. No problem. Well, I'm glad you're on. So tell us what all about this area. Um, well, and why you think this one's interesting? I think we, we sort of let, uh, went towards this one because um, we've sort of something to cut our teeth on. Uh, you know, so obviously it's already been half done, but um, yeah, the beach walls and everything are much brighter than mm -hmm. in reality, so probably paint over those. Um, so the bathrooms need to be modernised, the kitchen needs doing, the living areas need doing, um, and the real estate agent basically said that the sellers are pressured at the moment mm -hmm. and they'd be happy to accept offers before auction, right. which he was sort of leaning towards 460, but we were thinking maybe a little bit lower, Yep. Uh, around the 440. Okay. It has really, really amazing views that aren't currently taken advantage of. So an, another opportunity here missed by the agent in uh, showing us the views that were <laughs> potential in the area. Like I'm bringing, a, I've brought yeah, up here, maybe. I, when, um, I think you'd said that there was that like 440, 460 offers and uh, the median price for the area is around 562. So just generating this Residex report to get a kind of estimate, it would seem potentially, maybe we should hide the address for you, but potentially um, this could actually be uh, buying well below the market. And I think you've tapped on, and when I look down here a little bit further, I think you were saying that maybe 445 was the number that you're interested in. So 440, they actually bought this property in 2014 for 445. So it gives you a little bit of an indication often when you're looking at these type of reports and then the agent says, look, they're really, really keen to take offers before um, settlement that they might have bought before. They yeah, might have, um, don't have bridging loan and they've bought a property and already moved out because obviously this looks homeownerish. You've got the baby's bedrooms, etc., and it's, it's nicely presented. Yeah. The, the agent basically said there's been a divorce and uh, so they rented it out for oh. about six months to friends and now they're ready to sell, Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, well, so that is said. I mean, the thing here um, about Monash, I th think that you said it was it had beautiful views and there was a potential maybe to add a bit of a deck and add a, a little bit of um, opportunity as well. But, you know, the growth is kind of characteristic of what all Canberra's going to do. So we've got 3%, so it's not going to, not a lot is going to happen in the next uh, five years. Eight years time, yeah. you know, um, long term, 6% per year over the next eight years. So, you know, we usually talk about the rule of 72. So 72 divided by uh, six gives you an indication of how long it would take you to double your money. So for instance, if it was 10% uh, growth there, 72 divided by 10, it's take you seven years. So this is going to potentially take you a little while to do it. You know, if I was cutting my teeth on a, a property, um, if you could actually get this and for the lower end of the market and, you know, may potentially, you know, at 440, even 460, manufacture for, for yourself $60,000 worth of, of um, equity straight up, that would be fabulous. Um, and just looking at the property itself, you know, 
as Karen said, I don't think that there is, you know, you can fix up the bathrooms and maybe make the kitchen a little bit nicer. You know, it's a great, it's a great property. It's definitely, I don't think it's got enough pricing disparity in there uh, to flip it at all, but um, it's a really nice little property and, you know, I don't think I would be spending a whole lot of money on it. So if your idea was to cut your teeth as, on a renovation project, I don't know if, if this would be high on my, you know, on my agenda in doing that. But Kaz, do you have a thought on that? No, I'm kind of with you on that. I, I think it's a nice little property. Like if, say, you're going to buy it, you wanted to move into it for a few years, maybe there's some chance to add value down the track. It'll give you a nice house to live in in the meantime. Um, but, yeah, I'm just worried about, you know, if every other house around it was really schmick, high-end renovated, then, okay, yeah, you've got something to work with. I'm just worried, yeah, that it's already at a state that is pretty decent for yep. a rental property. Um, yep. And is there enough disparity at the moment? Yeah. And, and that when we're talking about disparity there, uh, Lisa, we're talking about that difference between the renovated and the unrenovated properties. And when we just looked there quickly on that uh, Residex report, we could see that you know they were actually putting it in the street around about five. So it's already the kind of average for the street. So that would be my, con my, my concern. So yes, yeah. I hope that helps. Does that give you a little bit more information about, uh, about the property that you're looking at? Yeah, that was fantastic. Thanks so much, Dan oh, and Karen. Pleasure, pleasure. Oh, goodness, we're getting through these. John, how are we going with that next property? Let's bring it up. Sure, Jane. This solid brick family home, circa 1950s in Croydon Park, South Australia, has been in one family for almost 66 years. The home is located on a generous corner allotment that is suitable for development or subdivision, according to the real estate agent. The home has great street appeal with a Mount Gambia stone facade. Facing west, the home captures ample natural sunlight, keeping the home well lit throughout. Separate lounge room and wood combustion heater keeps the home warm over winter. The home has the original timber kitchen. All three bedrooms are large and the main bedroom is overlooking the front garden. Well, this one's a little bit interesting. Let's just see if we can pull up, and I think it is Matt. Is Matt McLean available? And put your hand up, Matt, and we're going to unmute your line. We're going to get you to pitch this to us. It's uh, definitely right for renovation, right for making a profit for renovation. Let's check it out. Hey, Matt, I think we can hear you. How are you? Thanks. Oh, I can. You're very, very light. You're going to have to scream for me. <laughs> Thank you for putting this up. Hey, do you want to take us through and tell us a bit about the area and why you tro chose it? South Australia is uh, featuring prominently tonight. Yeah, no worries. Um, I guess the, the reason with the area is that um, it's about eight k's from the city. It's pretty close. Just from doing the, the dot map um, and looking at the median values and, and growth over the past sort of 10 years and surrounding areas, um, it is uh, sort of under the, the rest of the values and hasn't had quite as much growth. Um, it's an area uh, that's located very close to a major shopping centre and also probably the, the major TAFE uh, in, in Adelaide. Um, it's uh, sort of close to public transport and all that kind of thing as well. Um, and uh, yes, as we sort of heard there, it's the original owner. I've had it since the 1950s. Obviously, uh, everything in original condition, so plenty of uh, opportunity for renovation. Mm -hmm. um, but also, that corner block, um, obviously, there's opportunity there for, for subdivision and redevelopment. So, um, it's also an area that uh, has a high percentage of renters, um, and it seems that there's a, a lot more younger and, uh, and singles moving into the area, so it does seem sort of uh, prime for gentrification as well. Great! I love your summary. Like you, you're talking, you're talking my language. How did you find the dot map exercise? Was that uh, was that infuriating, or did you uh, did you really uh, get stimulated by it? Yeah, I actually quite enjoyed it. Um, I sort of did it manually myself first, and then uh, went to the effort of doing it all on Google Maps as well. Um, so yeah, no, I, I found it uh, quite good. It was sort of more of a, an open, open my eyes to a lot of the areas. I mean, I've lived in Adelaide all my life, but yep. uh, open my eyes to areas and, and sort of you know, figures and that sort of thing that I, I didn't know about. So uh, it's helped a bit too, yeah. I think it's interesting, just uh, the dot map exercise, for those who don't know, is essentially getting the last 10 years capital growth. So you can do that by um, getting the back of Australian Property Investor Magazine or your investment property magazine, and they'll give you that 10-year growth. 
get a great big map, you know, mapworks.com.au or, or an air, you know, your map supplier, get it laminated, get some translucent dots, and then basically you're allocating a dot color for the incremental change in um, capital growth. So it might be blue for less than 4%. Uh, you go to green for 4 to 5%. And so what Matt has done here is he's trying to get a feel for that ripple effect. So he's looking at where has there been, you know, as the city has moved out. So you said 8Ks from the CBD. Where has there been movement and growth that's been associated with, you know, people maybe not being able to afford one area and moving to the next area? So, you know, I did this exercise back in 2006 uh, looking at Kingsford, you know, the median price for, you know, Coogee and Maroubra and Ramwick and, oh, and uh, Kensington were over a million dollars. The median price was around 625 for Kingswood. Kingsford. We bought there. The, and, you know, fast forward now to 2016, 10 years later, the median price for Kingsford is 1.8 million. I mean, that's just insane. So, you know, that ripple effect gives you the indication of, of those areas that um, potentially might have that capital growth. So Matt's done a fantastic job with dotting and, and finding this. But also what I really like about this is, you know, the property itself, as you indicated, being on the the side block, this that potential for subdivision. Now, we've kind of looked at this a little bit earlier for someone else to get that feel for. Well, really, if you take an 830 square meter block and divide it into, are there other blocks that are 400 square meters that are being sold at the moment? So, where I go to to work that out is over to SQM Research. So let's jump over there now and have a look. And let's put in Croydon Park, Croydon Park in South Australia. So what we're looking at here is some of the past sale information. So uh, we've got, you know, this 800 square meter block that you're talking about, and we're looking at some sales. So there's sales definitely around that 350 and 400 mark. Uh, let's just have a look in the last 12 months. Yep. So this, this wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't necessarily just take this off my list and say no subdivision possible because obviously there are properties that are selling in that, that size range. And that would be my first check. You know, I'm not a subdivision expert, but that would be one of my first checks to see if there is a target market for it. And then obviously going and doing the talks to the council. Um, one of the other things that I did here was I jumped through and had a look at... I think I grabbed a Residex report for this mat. Let me just see if I've got that there. So let's just have a look at this. So that three bedroom house, it's saying around 377. Have they got it listed for anything in particular? Uh, or the agent saying anything? Uh, well, it's going to auction. I think they got it. The auction's 415. Yeah. And especially, you know, although the way that these estimates are determined is the, and one of the reasons I like using Residex for some of these estimates is that they go through and they have a number of tests to do it, but they look at all the resale uh, prices of properties and they actually revalue every property in Australia every month. So they're not allowing new developments and new property data for suburbs to actually sway the price point because that obviously if there's been new property come on the market can do that. So they're only resale or secondhand properties. So they look at the comparable sales of you know what has sold within the period and maybe it's within the last year. They then um, look at over that period of time, what the growth has been, and they do an indication of what the future, or what the, the price would be now if it's sold. Um, they go once again through the streets. So this is really interesting when we look, have a look at Stephen Street. It's a four, so it's below the average, but there's not a lot of range, you know, 50 grand. So about 15% between, you know, your, you know, your ones and your nines. So it's not, a, it's not a property that has a lot of pricing disparity in the street for, for um, what I would consider to be high end renovated up here and unrenovated down here. But let's just have a look at the growth and see you know, what's been happening here. Hasn't, uh, hasn't had a lot of growth in the area. So this might just be the fact that you've, you've found an area that hasn't quite tipped into that growth phase as yet. We're looking at these median prices here and the median values for Adelaide compared to Croydon Park. So we're around about that 350. Um, we're looking at the rental yields, 4.2, much better than anything anyone's getting in Sydney and in, uh, in uh, Melbourne. 
and here's some great growth. So, you know, your dot map here, um, you've used that not having to buy a report to indicate what the predicted growth would be. And, you know, this is validating exactly what your dot map's done. So good job, Matt. <laughs> That's always nice, isn't it, when that happens? I'm going to also run into Ripe House over here and I'm going to have a look at um, this suburb just so that we can just get a, a quick little indication of where your property is in relation to the suburb. So this is property number six. We only have one more to go. Ooh, tender hooks. I'm very excited. Okay, so Croydon Park, three bedroom houses. There's 23 three bedroom houses, um, 23 properties on the market at the moment. Uh, let's have a quick little look to see if we can see this one here. Ooh, where has it gone? No, it's not. There it is. So, 415 has been quoted, came in the market January the 10th. So we've got um, some information here about the suburb. Let's just have a look about this little pocket here. So we've got 49% renters in this pocket. So it's a really good area for renters. However, there's 50% units just in this pocket compared to the 18% um, for the whole suburb. So some interesting data there. We can have a quick little look to just check um, yep, so this is where the renters want to be in the yellow area and this is also, this area is quite um, prevalent for units, so interesting. Okay, Matt, well thank you so much for sharing that with us, I really appreciate it. You know, once again it's, um, you know, at 4.15 it's above the market a bit, but you know, we've got, you know, an opportunity to do that subdevelop subdivision and it looks like there is um, market at 400 square metre mark. And this could be, if you wanted to keep it, renovate it. But it does have some structural water issues here that I think are associated with the air conditioner. So thank you very much for sharing. Hey, John, shall we go to the last property and have a look at this one? And I think Karen's got some extra information she can share on this. Thanks, Jane. Offered to the market for the first time in almost 100 years, wow. this magnificent Queenslander home on two prime lots of land has been owned by three generations of the same family and is now ready to begin the next chapter of its life. This block is in a sought after inner city location. This is blue chip real estate and presents a once in a lifetime opportunity, according to the agent. The home is grand in proportions with soaring ceilings and wide halls. Underneath the house is concrete and you will be immediately struck by how cool it is. From this vantage point, you can truly appreciate what this property has to offer. Oh, Karen, this uh, this kitchen looks like there's had a lot of love in there, don't you think? Yeah, I think there's been a few few kids reared in that house, and you know, 100 years, it's probably seen a lot. I reckon that backyard would just be prime cricket pitch material for a large family. Yes, yeah, so I imagine maybe once there was a tennis court. Who knows? Now, when I sent this over to you, you came straight back and told me something interesting about it. So give us some insider information. I did. I've got a little insider information on this one for you because I've actually investigated this one in, in quite a bit of detail for a client. So it was when I saw this one, I thought, oh, that's a good one because I know all about that. <laughs> well, it wasn't but, staged um, at all. <laughs> no, exactly. Look, I think... Um, Location is, is really good here, obviously. Red Hill is a really good suburb of Brisbane. Mm -hmm. It's about three k's from the CBD, very sought after. Um, so a, a really good location. It's a tricky house, though, because um, it's, you know, it's an old house, so you need to have a think about uh, zoning and overlays and things like this when it comes to character-style housing. Mm -hmm. So you can't knock this house down. Yep. Um, that's an important thing to think about. Okay. Um, the other uh, really interesting thing is it's on two lots, but the house, often we see that a lot in Queensland, there's a house on two lots, but often it straddles the lots. So, and because it's character, you can't knock it down. Therefore, the two lots are kind of not really going to, you're not going to do anything with those mm. uh, under current zoning regulations. But in this case, the old house that you can't knock down is actually way over to one side completely on one lot. So you've got a whole blank lot of land right there that you could potentially do something with. And houses are worth a lot of money in this suburb. So mm. you build something on there and you're going to be have the potential to, to make quite a bit of money, depending obviously on how well you can build it. And, um, 
so it's a really tricky one. Very tough to price this house. Yep. Um, and this is another thing that we raised before about automated tools that give you automated valuations and how you need to be a little careful. So I did an RP data valuation, automated valuation on this one, mm. and it's 877000 Bingo, buy um, it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, geez, if I could buy it at that price, I would have been hocking everything I could to get the cash. I <laughs> I'll send you um, a check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We could go halves on it, Jane. We'll make a packet. Um, but the site value alone on that, in the same page on RP data, the site value alone is 980000 mm, So okay. it doesn't stack up for that to be that whole thing to be worth eight eight seventy seven. So um, that's something to think about. The other thing to think about, and I look, because as I said, I looked into this in quite a bit of detail, mm. is just because you've got a vacant block of land, does that mean it's actually usable land? And that's really important. In Brisbane, a lot of things flood. Yep. So you have to look at that and flood can stop you from developing land. Now in this case, that's not the case. It doesn't flood, but there are some challenges that you have to overcome with this particular lot because there's a slope on the block and you've got to think about when you're making a new lot how you get services to and from that block. So sewer and water particularly are your big things that you have to think about. So there's a few engineering challenges that have to be mm. sorted out on there before you could actually plonk a house on it. And you'd have to factor that into your costings. Um, the house itself is completely original. It, the roof is very old, needs a new roof. Um, and the inside of it is completely original. So it will yield terribly in its current state, yeah, yeah. but has amazing future potential, I think. Yeah. Do we have Michelle or Scott on the line? Scott is Scott? Scott, do we have, have you there? Hi, Jane. Hey, how you Hi, going, Karen. Scott? Good, how are you? Oh, talk about potential, potential, potential. You've got a good eye? Uh, that's what we saw, if, as you said in your uh, in your email. If money was no object, um, that's definitely one that we would love to do. <laughs> Absolutely. So so tell us, you know, are you familiar with this Red Hill area? Is what uh, Karen's saying about uh, this property consistent with what you've, your research has been? Uh, yeah, well, we, we actually live in uh, rural New South Wales, so country, but we spend uh, quite a bit of time in, in Brisbane. Uh, my wife um, did some training up there uh, when she was younger, and uh, yeah, she knows Brisbane quite well. We spend quite a bit of time there and love that area, know how it's in that inner city circle uh, within yeah. that 5K, and um, just, yeah, know how, how beautiful that area is. And, and to find something like that that is um, a beautiful old Queenslander, but on such a big block, um, you just... They're rare to find up there and, and, and just saw the potential straight away. Exactly. You can almost imagine yourself on that veranda having a, a, a cold in the afternoon, can't you? <laughs> sure can. Well, look, one of the, the things that uh, I'm going to do here, so as Karen said, you know, it's interesting uh, generating a, a, a Residex or a, a strain property monitor or a um, uh, RP data report but you know sometimes you have to put the extra information into it and this is um, I guess what I would do to try to get a feel for what the past sales are so you know as Kaz said around 800 was what was kind of quoted here on the AVM so if I just look at this and I've put Red Hill in here into the RP data professional search 2,300 properties in that suburb have come up now if I close that uh, criteria down to three bedroom houses, there's only 570. So about a quarter of the properties are um, within that type of uh, criteria. Now, if we're now looking at land size and our land size here is 900 square meters, what I'm trying to do here is just get a feel for, you know, how, how many big blocks are there there? So, you know, we've got 12, blocks that are actually over 900 square meters. So we've got this one sold in 1998, probably not relevant. This one, 2015, 925. We've got um, these ones here, too old, too old. 2014, 1.4 million. We've got uh, not declared, so $2 million, 2013, 1100. So this is kind of giving me an indication of you know what is in that price bracket. So there's no sales history recently uh, in the last year that I've got set here. We've got this property on the market at the moment. If I did a market compare, uh, what it's come up with here is uh, telling me that 
you know, there was a property that, a three bedroom property, thousand square meters that was on the market for around one to 1.1 million dollars. Now Kaz, when you did your estimate for your client, what did, what was your end kind of uh, price point of what you thought this might actually end up at? Yeah, really hard one to price. I have to say it was very challenging because as I said before, the really unique thing with this is it's two lots but the house is already on one side. Yeah. So we actually came at it from a number of different angles to try and price it. But my estimate, and obviously it's going to auction, there's all sorts of people interested in this. There's developers and there's home buyers and, and all sorts. Um, but I would have put it up north of 1.3. Yeah. So uh, if money was no object, <laughs> Scott, I think you got the right property. It's a, it's a beautiful area and, um, you know, the information that, uh, you know, Kaz has been able to, to give us, you know, th this is the, that land value, as she said, that's come through at 980. Um, a lot of information available here. But, you know, once again, it's, it'd be interesting just to see this in aerial view to get a feel for how big that block really is. So, you know, potential for doing something on the other side, you're going to pay for it, but it is the, it is the area that you uh, you would pay for, for this type of uh, property. So there's a, I guess, um, it's a bit hard. It's a, it's a large price point. Is it a strategic renovation? Well, you could definitely renovate the first property. I like the idea that there's a second twist to this area, which is that you could possibly do something maybe on that second block. But at you know, 1.3 upwards, it's a, it's a big gamble to have. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's a nice find in a really good area that's close to the city and uh, is, is definitely uh, some, an area that people are looking at. So, uh, well done. Thanks, Joan. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, see you, Michelle. Bye, Scott. Well, John, I think we have come to the end and uh, maybe we could summarise the, the uh, properties that we've looked at. Yes, okay, here we go. So the first one we had, Jane, was an original cottage at 19 Kine Street, uh, Maruka, Queensland, submitted by Therese, uh, which was situa situated on a large level block that could have good development prospects. Was that one? Uh, the second one was Marcus, who bought us a very interesting pro property in desperate need renovation located at 12 Harding Street, Coburg. Just a stroll from Sydney Road Shops and the uh, eateries in the tram. Uh, then Anna showed us the Parkside Sandstone Fronted Villa at 59 uh, Leicester Street in Parkside, South Australia, located only five minutes drive to Adelaide CBD. And then uh, the Letty Street property in Prospect, South Australia, presented to us by Mark, which was the original uh, bungalow, perfect for renovation or development. And next was number five was by Lisa, and that was located in the suburb of Monash, ACT. Uh, that was 36 Clive Steel Avenue, Monash. The home itself had a number of recent improvements while still providing the next owner with plenty of opportunity to renovate to improve the value. Uh, number six was a solid brick 50s home at 4 Stephen Street, Croydon in South Australia, which was presented by Matt. Uh, the home is located on a generous corner allotment that is suitable for development and or subdivision, according to the agent. Number seven, lucky last, was offered to us uh, by Michelle and Scott, which was 19 Primrose Terrace, uh, Red Hill. And that was the first time on the market for 100 years. And that's your seven properties. Fabulous. Well, there you go. So what I would like to do now is potentially have a chat. Shall I try to see if anyone's there to have a chat, uh, John? Is, we've got Teresa there. Well, I'd like you to tell me why we should choose your property, Teresa. You've seen a bit of a rundown on uh, the other properties. Put your hand up so we can find you, um, and please. But yeah, we'd like to, to hear why we should be looking at your property and uh, why you should win the Ultimate Guide on Renovation 2016. Hi. Hey. So why should we choose you and your property at Maruka? Um, I wasn't expecting this one. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm always into surprises. You know how it is. I've got pieces of paper everywhere here. We're just going with the flow. Yes. Um, I mean, yeah, I think it's got a lot of potential um, for a cosmetic reno and just for the future growth of the area. Mm -hmm. um, being Maruka, mm -hmm. close to the CBD, I really like it. And um, the main reason, I suppose, why you should choose me is that 
I'm absolutely passionate about property and renovating and I've just got so much to learn. I think it'd be a fantastic opportunity. Fabulous. Well, I've got to say I'm a bit excited about that 7% growth that uh, you found. So uh, good job. We'll stay on the line because we're going to go to the next property and we're going to see, well, maybe, let's just hope. Marcus, has he turned up yet? I've been unmuted, finally. Yay. <laughs> You've been chatting to me for a long period of time, haven't you? Going, why doesn't she talk to me? Tell us, tell us about this Coburg one. We didn't have a chance to talk to you earlier, but I hope you heard uh, some of the analysis and uh, had a look and saw that Residex, hot, Residex Top 100 and the Residex uh, um, Hotspot Report, right, Residex Renovator Report for Coburg. So uh, mm -hmm. big ticks there. So tell us about this property and why you should win. Well, to start off with, I, um, how I found the property was I had to, with the renovation, uh, you could pick other, other main the cities in the country. So I thought Melbourne for yourself, Jane, or Queensland for Cairns. So I ended up going with, um, with, with Jane. And I am a recent subscriber to Ripe House. So I put in, I thought about the, the, um, the what's the, the, the strategy, the Trident strategy, the the growth the strategy, strategy, yeah. That's right. But what what would have um the the market um, growth, the capital growth? So I thought it would be something within ten kilometres also of the CBD. So I put into Ripe House, I think about ten kilometres within Melbourne CBD, mm -hmm. and I put in the flipping strategy and applied that, and up came Cobra with a great um, great response. So within me, and I just dug down and looked for variables between the median and what was on the market and saw that three bedrooms were the highest demand and then just applied the principles that you told us to apply in all the recent web, uh, recent podcasts you've been hosting on Everyday Property Investor, On Property and um, Property Talk with Kevin. I'm pretty impressed with that, Kaz. Are you impressed? I think he's hit hit every nail on the head. Yeah, I think he's great. Good job. <laughs> not, not just a strategic uh, renovation, yeah. but a strategic well, decision. Ticking all the boxes on this entry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, Marcus. Well, well done on that. I, uh, I, I love how you've done the analysis. And, and as I said earlier, you know, we, uh, I had a small group, ten people, mastermind on Saturday, and we, we did, we dot mapped, and uh, you can dot map in forty five minutes with five people, a whole city. So uh, grab your friends, grab a bottle of wine, and, and see what you can do. But Coburg was one of the top ten suburbs that came up, so it was interesting. And I had those. Uh, Residex top 100 reports for renovators and that report and you know it was very interesting so thank you for bringing that to our attention Marcus fingers crossed for you let's uh moved on to the third property that we had and um Anna so uh Anna is not there I don't think I can pitch for her but uh we had uh so it was an executor so I'm going to get you guys to vote soon so keep these notes um, we were looking at, it was just a small area, we had 38% renters, um, it was already on the median, it was okay, you know, the valuation came in with a huge differential, so there was some potential there, so thank you Anna for that. No luck with Anna I'm afraid uh, Jane, and I think Mark might be a problem too, we actually never got on to Mark, <laughs> I, don't, I think he's gone missing. Oh, disappointing. Well Mark had the property at 18 Letty Street, so Mark, you're not going to pitch for it? I'm just going to say potential growth, 2 to 3%. It um, did have the nice pink carpet, and but it did have that large cracks and structural renovation. So it seemed like it to be a really nice little suburb um, in prospect. The microburbs indicated it was nice as well. And, yeah, so that was property number four. So remember that one, guys. And then we went to property number five. Running through my notes here. Lisa presented the 38 steel 38 Clive Steel Avenue in Monash. Lisa, are you back with us on the line? Lisa Fuller. Okay, well, Lisa. Um, Lisa had an interesting property and we had a look at that. Growth 3%, 6%, um, ACT. It um, adds some deck, but we thought maybe there was more uh, opportunity elsewhere. And if you're going to do a renovation, you might be able to put your money to better use because a lot of it really had been done. So interesting, interesting property there. And then we had 
Number six on our list, Matt. Where's Matt? Matt, can you hear us? Matt in Croydon Park? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I'm so excited when people actually talk to me, Matt. <laughs> so, so tell us about uh, why we should choose you and uh, you've seen all the other properties. What do you reckon? Uh, look, I just think this property's just got a, a, a lot of potential, um, not only with the renovation, but also having the development side of it there as well. And um, as you saw, there certainly is still a market for those um, houses on the smaller blocks in the area. So yeah. I think that, um, along with having you know a pretty good rental yield, having yield in a strong rental market, makes it uh, sort of pretty good uh, you know, longer term investments. Um, and as we sort of said, I'm pretty confident in the uh, in the dot map exercise that I've done and uh, the ripple effect. And I think it is surrounded by a lot of high forest areas and. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, there's certainly a lot of potential there for long-term growth in addition to the, the manufactured growth that you can do as well. And uh, I, I guess in regards to, to me personally, I mean, I've already picked up so much from going through the Your Property Success modules and I think the ultimate guide to renovation would just uh, help me sort of go to that next level. So I'm uh, very excited and uh, appreciate the opportunity. Pick me, pick me. <laughs> Good. Oh, well, thank you so very much for putting the property up. I really appreciate it. It was a really, really great one. And finally, we go to Scott and Michelle, I think, over in, um, well, rural New South Wales, looking at a property in Red Hill. So, guys, Scott, are you uh, back with us there? You might see if yes. we... Yes. Oh, yes. Fabulous. Yes. <laughs> Tell us why should we select your property? Uh, we just think it's just a rare, rare find. Um, a, a property, a, a beautiful old Queensland that hasn't been touched in a hundred years. No. Um, on a double block, it's like an opportunity to to renovate to to make a beautiful Queensland. Then have a, have the opportunity to develop the other the other side of the block. Um, just a rare find, and we just think it. it Hey, I'll go thirds with you girls if you want to want to be involved. And I just think it's a, I just, I just don't think you could you lose. I don't think you could lose. I just think it's an amazing. It would be a, whoever picks it up would be an amazing property to own. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And uh, you know, winning the course, how would that help you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, we're, we're, we've, we've renovated a house of our own, we've built two of our own and now we've, we've started a new phase of our life where we'd really love to get into, uh, um, the, yeah, to buying and selling and investing and renovating. We love that, we're passionate about it and uh, yeah, to do it as a team together would be amazing things to do. So, yeah. Well, fabulous. I think we, we're going to run a, a poll now. I really appreciate you guys um, putting that property up and uh, hanging out to us. for. The, um, so let's choose, now we can only do seven four at a time so we're going to get you to choose one of which property to choose one to five so we're going to do a little poll here and uh, get you guys to vote so john we got how are we going we've got a few coming through 20 30 percent come on guys we want you to vote click on one tell us which one you like so property one property two property three property four okay five Four, three, two, one. Which one did you choose? Let's have a look here. Oh, the Coburg one is winning at 48%. I'm going to have to write that down. Coburg at 48 Oh, Marcus, lucky that you called back in. And we've got uh, Lester at 18%. Maruka Trees, are you still in there? 27%. Oh, Letty Street Prospect didn't do too well. Shall we go to the next poll, John? Well, I have to tell you, we have had a lot of fun tonight. 83% mm, over Clive Street uh, went to Croydon Park. So Croydon Park, ah, that was our dot map man. So looking at the dot map, I don't know, John, can we do a poll on the run? Not possible. Ooh, Red Hill, I know you feel like you're being robbed there. So we might just have to uh, get people to write in the chat box, would you have chosen Red Hill over Croydon Park? Unfortunately, just confirm for me, John, that uh, in the chat box, everyone went for Croydon Park over Red Hill there? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So we have a top three here. We have Croydon Park in South Australia. We have Coburg in Melbourne and Maruka in Queensland. So 
We haven't had a chance to grab Teresa on the phone as yet, but um, we have got Marcus and we have got, oh, it's Matt, isn't it? So what, what are we going to do, John? Shall we throw it to them to have a, a little final, final pitch for Matt and Marcus? Yes, uh, how about you just um, type in, if the audience types in what they think of those two. Okay, so we're going to go Kroberg over Croydon Park. Coburg versus Croydon Park. See, live and exciting, as I said. You're going to help me decide here. So, before I reveal my favourite property and draw the winner of our fantastic prize, the Ultimate Guide to Renovation 2016, and while all of you are typing in your chat box which property that you would prefer, I'm hearing laughter from the other, other side of the room, so I'm imagining some people are really doing some heavy yes. pitching here. There's one property in particular that's uh, getting a <laughs> lot, a lot of votes. Okay. Oh, I wish I could see the chat. Okay. So what we're doing is we've got a lot, a lot of votes that are coming in. Whilst you are chat writing in the chat box, who are you going for? Croydon Park, South Australia or Coburg in Melbourne? Um, I want to let you know next Tuesday, the 1st of March, I'm going to be releasing a very special free educational video series. And as you've heard from some of the others already this evening, um, they've been part of the um, Your Property Success family or Your Property Success Club, and they've got so much uh, information from just learning about dot maps or watching, you know, listening to podcasts with the beautiful Kaz and, um, and uh, listening to all the information we have. So this is a free educational series coming up. It's about strategic renovation case studies. And look, it took over nine months to film and edit this. So it was a bit of a labor of love. It follows the progress of a cosmetic renovation, task by task from start to finish. So hundreds of hours of filming, guys. Um, now, as many as you know, I've used strategic renovation to grow my own portfolio, and it is the center pillar of my Trident strategy that we've discussed a little bit here tonight. However, many people are apprehensive about taking on a renovation project themselves because let's face it, we've all heard the horror stories. So in this video case study, I go through from inspection process of the property, all the way through to choosing the finishes to the final renovation. So there's these three videos, four part video series, you're going to see everything down to the beautiful reveal at the end. So, you know, it's a it's an incredible series that we're, we're so proud of putting together. And, you know, the fact that it's a real life renovation case study showing you exactly what to do on video is something really great. So there you go. Stay tuned next Tuesday. As I said, the actual Ultimate Guide to Renovation 2016 will be opening up in the next three weeks. It's only open for seven days, so we can jump in and help our students get to success as quick as possible. So um, please don't miss that. Now, we have a winner. Oh, a piece of paper is being foiled at me. Coburg is number one. Marcus, are you on the line? Yes, I am on the line. Hello. Oh. We're so very exciting. So if anyone's late to this call, what was up for grab grabs is the lifetime access to my 12 week ultimate guide to renovation 2016 course, the strategic renovation course for strategic investors. And I have to say you were pretty impressive with your strategic positioning of this property as well. So um, I'm really excited. You know, tell me what's this going to mean to you, Marcus? What, can, what are you going to do with it? Oh, well, first of all, it means I get to hear both your voice and Kay's voices much more, more often, because you're obviously both highly involved in this. Um, I like to take the emotion out of these things and look more for the, you know, what it adds up, yep. exactly what you guys are teaching. So by being involved with this course, I'll be able to, you know, apply it actually how you want it to be applied, pay attention, and obviously because I'm starting to use Rob House too, and you use it with the course, I can actually learn how to use the tool properly and apply it and hopefully the numbers add up and it's going to really um, make some changes. Look, I love the I love the way that you use the the ripple effect, you know, you targeted uh, and you weren't scared to target a state where you didn't live. You're in Western Australia, you know, and you looked at it. Well, how many properties did you look at or consider before you put this one up? 
Um, well, actually, not didn't have to do too many because Rivehouse did it, well, most of it for me, so it cut out a lot of time. And straight away, the numbers just added up. I saw the, the big variance between unrenovated and renovated, and what the median was, and who the target um, buyers were. Exactly what you, you've said, who's going to buy it. Think in the end result. Yep. And it all just came straight away. So whether it's too good to be true, or if you just follow the right process, you get to where you need to be, cutting out a lot of time. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, I, I showed you tonight some free websites, I showed you some paid websites, so you really had uh, a view of, you know, how you could potentially do this yourself. And, you know, the paid websites allow you to jump straight in and do things. I mean, Kaz, you're there online, you know, you, you obviously use a lot of tools when you're looking at, at properties and uh, having a lot of information at your hands, <laughs> it really helps, doesn't it? It does indeed. We do uh, quite a bit of research in the start of each project for a customer and sites like this can r just really make it so much easier. Yeah, absolutely. I remember when um, 10 years ago what we were trying to do manually. So uh, mm. uh, anyhow, but uh, look, I really, I really appreciate it. Well done. Congratulations. We'll be in contact with you in the next 24 hours and uh, confirm all your details, Mark, uh, Marcus. And I really appreciate everyone who's actually put a property up. I know that uh, it's a little bit daunting sometimes, uh, you know, putting yourself out there and commenting. You know, as, as Marcus indicated and, and Kaz and I speak about quite regularly, you know, pricing disparity is something that's uh, what a lot of people miss. And it's, it's possible to do a renovation, but doing a profitable or strategic renovation is where the money is. And that's what we really want to share with you. So don't miss that four part video series. So anyhow, I've shown you a lot of information tonight. You know, we've talked about the best investment property. We've talked about renovation potential. I think you might be getting a little bit of a feel that to have a strategic renovation done right actually isn't all about the renovation. It's about the property and where it's located as well and what your strategy is, you know, that flipping strategy or buy and hold and really targeting the right areas. And that is the key to a real strategic renovation. So I hope you didn't miss that. Um, look, I'm going to wrap things up. So unfortunately, you know, we're out of time and I know some people have had some questions there and I've tried to answer a lot of you uh, over the last few days on Facebook and I really appreciate you putting those properties up again. And um, I think that, you know, the quality the quality of the properties that we've seen just shows a step out in the education, the tools that people have and they have at their fingertips to allow them to, um, to actually advance. So just a reminder, I'm releasing that renovation case study this Tuesday, the Tuesday, the 1st of March. Also keep an eye out for the ultimate guide to renovation.com.au. Once again, thank you so much for your contributions. Thank you, Kaz, for joining me on this, this fun whirlwind that we've been on. It's really great to have you here and uh, appreciate Thank all of your you. insight. Thank you. <laughs> well, good luck everyone, and I wish you your own property success.